The next central bank I'd like to discuss uh, is the People's Bank of China, the central bank for the second largest individual economy in the world. Now, importantly, people who are not Chinese tend to mix up Bank of China, which is a commercial entity, uh, with the People's Bank of China, which is the central bank of the People's Republic of China. Uh, <clears throat> it's worth noting that the original sort of Bank of China uh, was the Re Republic of China's central bank from 1912 to 1949. Uh, this was absorbed into uh, <clears throat> the People's Re Republic uh, of course, and led to uh, ultimately was one of the three institutions uh, that was used to build up the People's Bank of China, which was interestingly enough, the only bank in China from 1950 until 1978, when what we currently recognize as the big four Chinese banks were spun off. Uh, these include the China Construction Bank, Agricultural Construction Bank, uh, Bank of China, etc. So with these four large Chinese banks that we now recognize today as some of the largest institutions in the world used to be part of the state monolith that was the uh, People's Bank of China. Uh, but it was felt that as part of their modernization drive starting in 1978 that these banks should try to have a little bit more policy independence in terms of who they were going to lend money to. Uh, so even though the uh, four large banks are still state controlled, they do have a little bit of leeway in terms of who they choose to do business with and how they choose to conduct their affairs. <clears throat> now, the People's Bank of China was the primary banking regulator for uh, the People's Republic until 2003. It's since been replaced by the China Banking Insurance and Regulatory Commission uh, because what they found was that the central bank was simply wearing too many hats. Right? If you remember back in the 1950s and 60s, there was one bank in China and it was responsible for monitoring all the lending and borrowing that passed through this institution as the bank began to fracture into more and more entities to provide a little bit of competition in the market, uh, they also felt it was appropriate to remove uh, direct supervision of these banks from the central bank's remit. Now, the People's Bank of China runs the domestic interbank payment system, uh, what's referred to as CNAPS, the China National Advanced Payment System. Uh, this is effectively a backbone network that connects uh, all of the major institutions in the country, and it's the rail effectively over which all of the various payment systems in China run. Uh, the most visible of these payment systems is what we call union pay. Uh, it's an interbank settlement system that enables uh, the use of one bank's cards in another bank's machines. Uh, we have this sort of system in Canada where you can use your RBC card at a Scotiabank ATM without any sorts of problems, uh, and it's union pay that makes that possible in China. Uh, you may recognize the logo for Union Pay. You'll see it all over the place. Uh, Union Pay is active even within Canada, and in fact has the widest card network in the entire world, uh, giving it a very wide reach for being able to coordinate payments across borders, not just domestically. Now, the People's Bank of China, in terms of control, uh, reports directly to the State Council, and it definitely does not have monetary policy independence. The controllers of the Bank of China that we see here uh, does not necessarily have the authority to make the kinds of policy choices uh, that they prefer. Li Gang is constrained by uh, the <clears throat> Communist Party of China to make sure that central bank policies are not necessarily focused on price stability uh, so much as being focused on whatever policy objectives the state council happens to set for it. So if they're willing to sacrifice price stability for uh, maximizing employment, for instance, then that's what the PBOC is going to do. Uh, it adjusts its mandate necessarily in order to reflect its instructions from the state council. Uh, and in general, its primary tool for engaging in monetary policy uh, is ultimately its reserve requirements that uh, commercial banks happen to have. <laughs> Now, it does promote stability in interbank markets uh, by acting as a lender of last resort. It typically does not do this very publicly, though, and is not, strictly speaking, required to act as a lender of last resort. Uh, it often, nonetheless, um, does so simply because it has a mandate to maintain financial stability. Uh, and we see that these kinds of uh, stealthy PBOC actions take place quite a bit. In the late 1990s, uh, there was a significant uh, bank bailout that took place just before the big four banks were uh, sold off to the public in large uh, initial public offerings. There were also enormous liquidity injections, which it did not initially acknowledge in 2008 to help deal with the financial crisis. And then again, more injections of uh, emergency liquidity in 2013 and 14. Uh, but the PBOC is notoriously opaque about such programs. Like many other things, for example, the composition of the China Investment Corporation's portfolio, uh, it deems sort of a state secret. 
Uh, and the idea is that they don't want speculators internationally taking advantage of the central bank transmitting its moves uh, to try to upset the delicate economic balance that China has been trying to achieve. So when we think about how the, uh, the People's Bank of China uh, <clears throat> operates in terms of acting as a lender to, in order to engage in monetary policy, uh, it's worth noting that it doesn't have short-term lending facility um, necessarily like the Federal Reserve does. There is no discount window uh, where member banks can borrow in the short term from the central. Instead, the People's Bank of China offers one-year deposits and one-year loans uh, and uses the one-year rate as its primary policy instrument, as opposed to necessarily focusing on short-term debts. <clears throat> now, it's worth noting that over the last decade, we've seen both interest rates uh, on these one-year loans as well as the required reserves being held in commercial banks uh, are on the decline. Reserves at, at commercial banks have required reserves have fallen from 21% down to 9.5%, and uh, the interest rates on these one-year central bank loans has fallen from 65 to just under 4.5% over the same period. And this is largely a policy that's been undertaken by the PBOC in order to limit the impact of decelerating growth and to ensure that there is sufficient liquidity uh, in the Chinese system to encourage the development of the consumer market that the government holds as being an important policy, which would allow it to disconnect to some extent economically uh, from some of its export partners. Nonetheless, we should expect to see a lot more um, news coming out of the People's Bank of China over the next few years as the Chinese economy continues to grow uh, and the prominence of its central bank continues to rise. <clears throat> 